So today we have a pretty easy day. We are driving from Stratford, where we've been spending the last few days, to the little settlement of Opunake. It's a 30 minute drive. We have planned a couple of stops in it, so we should be done in a couple of hours. We are making our way to Apunake. We are going to take maybe about two hours to get there, stopping along the way to see a town which is meant to be the cheese capital of New Zealand, which has got Robin wet in his pants. But turn out that Eltham is actually a ghost town. There is no one and nothing. So we're walking down around, you know, in Main Street and we stop along, you know, we, we see all the shop. Everything is like abandoned and all closed. Closed here, closed here, closed there, closed there, closed here, closed there. Um, is that an old residence here which simply says old folks on it? <laughs> The story of Eltham and why it is so popular is basically because there were a Chinese guy called Chen Chu Chong which came in New Zealand um, in the late 1800s and um, so he arrived from China uh, where milk and dairy products were absolutely not popular this time and he was like hey I kind of like milk, butter and cheese I think that's going to be a great thing for the world and this is going to be a great industry for New Zealand so he was like, hey, my sister, my brother, we're going to export that to the world. So he bought a big farm here in Eltham and industrialized it, making it like, you know, all the process much more automatic and mechanical. So you can produce bigger quantity at cheaper price and start exporting it. And I think it's in 1892 that he actually sent the first butter to England, starting the New Zealand dairy industry, which is now the biggest industry in the country. And so we learned that a few days ago when going dairy farming. I think that's a story I'm probably totally wrong. Since those days, it looks like the place hasn't been touched. Yeah, the buildings have been neglected somewhat and it literally looks like all the shops and homes here. People have just up and left and not taken a thing with them. We look through some shop windows, there's still things in there, old doll's heads, there's a whole memorial to a lady inside a shop with literally all her possessions and saying like, you know, like in loving memory of Barbara and all of the stuff still left in the house. Like this is how much of a ghost town it is. Even the houses are gravestones literally for, you know, for ghosts. It's, it's a bizarre town. I am looking for the cheese of Eltham. I will be finding some cheese here. I have heard it's a great cheese town. I will find a cheese. Are we gonna find cheese? Yes. Will you find cheese? I can't find cheese, but I think you'll be able Do to. Do you have cheese? Um, I want cheese. I'm gonna uh, follow my nose and find cheese. Okay, boss <laughs> Hey man, looks like you got a lot of cheese right here, or at least you got the milk. Where can I get some cheese here in Eltham? What's that? Oh, he doesn't know. Keep on looking. So we arrived inside the cheese bar and well, that was not what I expected. Um, there is no bar. There is no one kind of serving you. There is no super fancy cheese. It's basically everything that is already in the supermarket. 
Yeah. I mean, w w what noise does Dream Shattered make? Because that's basically the soundtrack you should be playing right now. Go and try some cheese. All together on the same cracker? Oh no, like bite them individually. What the hell? I'm sorry, I'm not usually picky about things I see in New Zealand really. Like everywhere we've seen so far has been pretty awesome, but I'm sorry, this cheese bar is disappointment. So let's move on to the Holland Garden. For once in New Zealand, we are driving down a straight road and we hear a just bang. That bang sound is the sound of metal wheel touching ground where tyre is meant to be in between. The tyre has exploded. Robin's phoning the roadside assistants, having issues there, but finally the message gets across where we are, that we need someone to come and change our tyre. Usually, if you've got a small camper van or a car, you can change the tyre yourself. It's a job everyone should learn to do if they are a driver. But we have been advised with this massive camper van, with this massive motorhome, not to do that ourselves. There's a special way of doing it. That's not pretty, is it? Pretty good job. Yeah. The mechanic is done. He's like, hey, here's your paper slip for the for the car. Get the bolt checked within 100 kilometers. That's the law. So we arrive at the Holatz Garden, which is one of the three most prestigious gardens of Taranaki, which uh, were created and maintained during its lifespan by Bernie Holland. There's some fan tails, which aren't actually that scared of us, so we get some cool little pictures of those guys. Um, we are following the fan tails, and to my surprise, there are plants and flowers in bloom during winter. To me, I thought flowers didn't bloom in winter, but camellias do, so this is a surprise and a welcome surprise. More pictures and more plants, because no, I love plants. We end up at the Hollard Center. This is a building with some like vintage stuff in there. But the real draw to the Hollard Center is the complimentary tea and coffee. It's time to head to Opunake, where we're going to be spending the night in the Opunake Holiday Park. There is some gnarly waves, it's a surfer's paradise, and we can't wait to spend the day there tomorrow. I've been here for three days, no one suspects anything.